Allah in the Quran did not talk exhaustively about marriage. There are very few places in the Quran where Allah gave us some insights. And basically it's like instead of describing the entire building, He mentioned a few pillars. If those pillars are not there, the building's gonna collapse. And one of those pillars is that the money responsibility is the man's responsibility. He better go find a job. He better go get some work. He better go and provide because that is actually what Allah has made him responsible for. For the groceries, for the car, for the fuel, for the electricity bill, for the school, you know, school supplies for the kids, everything. Everything. And that starts from the very beginning. When you get married, you you're, you're take the responsibility of paying a mahr, a dowry. Right? And some people, they, they love to have a high number for the dowry for their daughter. They say it's going to be 100,000 or 50,000 or 250,000 or whatever. They put this crazy number. And they're like, no, 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 it's okay. You don't have to pay it now. It's okay. But mashallah, we, we should have a number that looks good. And then people are married for 20 years and the guy hasn't paid his dowry. That's ridiculous. Because this is a condition of making a marriage valid. And a husband isn't even allowed to say to his wife, Hey, by the way, can you give me a discount? I know you put 50, can we take a few zeros off of that? Or how about I give it to you, not dollars, can I give it to you in rupees? You know, <laughs> if you agreed to it, then you signed on. If you didn't want to agree to it, then you should have never signed that document. You're actually not even allowed to hint that you have trouble paying your mahar. Men aren't even allowed to hint at that. And after you pay the dowry, like if, you, if you're a monthly payments you're making, you give her like $500 or something, 100 bucks, whatever you give her, that's part of your dowry that you're paying off. And you pay her and you're like, fine, here's, here's your monthly. <laughs> you know, this week was really tough. You can't make none of those comments. And if she takes those $100 from you, and then she takes out a dollar bill and says, here, go get yourself some ice cream. If she does that, then, and you say, okay, thanks, you can take that if she did it on her own. But once you're handing that money, you're not even looking at that money anymore. It ain't yours. That's part of being a man, according to the Quran. And there are many men around the world whose wives are being told to go get a job and work while they're sitting at home. Muslim men. And they're saying, you have to obey your husband. What kind of ridiculous, what religion is that? Allah Azza wa made men responsible financially. If there's a desperate situation and a wife decides to go get a job and support financially or do on her own, that's a voluntary thing she's doing that she cannot be told to do. And if she does that, if she does get a job, if she does have a business, if her father left behind some stores or some property in her name, and you're like, hey, can, can we get some of that too? Because I'm your family. No, 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 that's her money. You can't touch it. Allah made this equation in which she has a financial advantage, meaning your money is basically hers. And her money is hers.